Hey everyone, I'm Alex. I am the producer, editor, and one of the cast members of our show, Roll for Distraction, which you can find right here on this YouTube channel. It's a TTRPG podcast, which I assume you're into if you clicked on this video. So we appreciate you checking that out. But you're here because you want to make your own podcast. So let's talk about that. We've been making our show for a little over a year now, and I just wanted to sort of pass along some of the knowledge that I've picked up on uh, all the sort of the tech stuff and all the preparation things that I've learned and uh, I hope you guys find this useful. This is gonna be a long video. Here's a bunch of time codes on the screen for you guys to skip around to if there's a particular section you're more interested in. This isn't a full in-depth software tutorial. I'm not really gonna teach you from nothing how to use Premiere or Audition or something like that. I'm just gonna show you the general methods and processes that I use to make the show. You can use the same type of things in other programs if you prefer Final Cut over Premiere, whatever the case is do what you like to do. If there is an appetite for super in-depth software tutorials like that, let me know down in the comments. I'll see what I can do. On a similar note, I'm going to skim over a lot of stuff here. So again, feel free to ask questions in the comments if there's something you want me to go a little more in-depth on. So let me preface all of this with the fact that you're probably not going to be super successful right off the bat. You're not going to take off and crush everything, and that's okay. We've been doing this for a little over a year. You can see our view numbers on the screen right now. We're not exactly critical role. We're just doing this for fun. If you go in expecting huge fame and success right off the bat, you're gonna be disappointed. Just enjoy the process of making a show for what it is, and if it becomes successful down the road, great. So with that in mind, what do you actually need to make a tabletop show? Two main things, number one, is a good amount of technical know-how. You don't need to be a computer genius or anything. I'm not, right? But you need to be at least pretty competent with computers in order to handle all of the editing and audio software and all that type of stuff. So just make sure one person on your team in your party is pretty comfortable with that sort of thing and is comfortable handling it and taking on the extra work that it entails. The second thing, obviously, is a game. You need a party, you need a game master. If you don't have a game, you don't have a show, right? When I started this show, I was lucky enough to be in a group with a pretty reliable group of friends already. We've all seen the memes about how difficult it is to get a consistent, <laughs> regular group of D&D players and or whatever your game of choice is. So for some people, that is going to be the biggest hurdle to making a, a show is just having a consistent group. But once you got that out of the way, you've got most of what you need. I prefer to play with real world friends myself, but I know there's plenty of people out there who play with strangers from seven different time zones. Just be careful on the internet, you don't need me to tell you that. Whoever you do end up going with, just make sure they're reasonably reliable about showing up on time, delivering any files that need to be delivered, whatever the case may be. So once you have your cast worked out, there's a little bit of other prep work you're gonna have to do before you're ready to just make the show. First, you need to do all of the typical prep work that you need to do to make a tabletop show, right? You need to have your campaign planned out, you need to have characters made, battle maps, so on and so forth. That's all the same as running a normal game. There's plenty of resources out there online for how to run a good session zero and how to plan a good campaign. You don't need me to tell you that. I'll just add that you want to be extra thorough with it, right? You're putting on a show. You're not just playing a game with your buddies. You are, but you're putting on a show for an audience, for the internet. So you want to kind of put your best foot forward, right? Really take your time with your DM planning. Make sure you're, you know, as a player, you're there and you're energized and you're ready to go. You've got a good, decent backstory written up. Just put your best foot forward because it's for the internet. It's a show. Besides the typical game setup stuff, you're also going to need to pick a name for the show itself, as well as the YouTube channel or wherever it's going to live. In our case, it's a role for distraction and Spellbook Gaming. Next, you're going to want to build that YouTube channel, if it doesn't already exist, as well as lock down all your other social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, an email address, uh, Patreon, Twitch. Even if you're not planning on using those services right away, it's good to have your username and everything like that claimed in advance. And lastly, you're of course going to need a podcasting account. We use Podbean to host our show. This was one of the more annoying parts for me personally. Uh, podcasts are sort of a very early internet concept, so they're sort of a little archaic in the way they do things. I'm probably not the best person to tutorialize you on that, but look up how to set up a podcast account. There's a bunch of tutorials on that already. We use Podbean to host our show, and what that allows us to do is push the show to Apple, Google, Spotify, and, and whatever other service pretty much we want to get it on. I'll say that this tutorial is focused on keeping your costs low, especially when you're starting out, but 
Podbean and most other podcast hosting platforms aren't free after a few episodes, so just keep that in mind. You'll also need logos, title banners, all that sort of graphic design branding type stuff. I'm not a professional graphic designer by any means, but as long as somebody in your group is like half decent with Photoshop, you should be able to manage. I hear Canva is pretty good for that sort of thing as well on the free side. If you want to go above and beyond, then you can make a slick animated title card like we have in After Effects or some such if you have those skills. So, once you actually have a game together, you've got everybody sat down, your campaign is prepped, how do you actually record? This is going to be one of the longer sections, so strap in. Say you and all of your players live relatively near one each other, and you're all comfortable appearing on camera. All you need then is one camera, a tripod, a half-decent omnidirectional microphone, and you're pretty much good to go. The bright side of this method is it's very simple. Just plop the camera down on one end of your table, and let it roll while you play. You won't have to get too flashy with your editing since it's just a single source for audio and video. The downside is that, of course, good cameras and microphones are pricey. They can run out of batteries in the middle of your recording. You might end up wanting to spend more and more money to have nicer lighting and better audio and mics for every individual person, and it snowballs very quickly. It can be a lot. I went to college for this type of thing. I studied TV and film, and I can tell you that this is not going to be practical for everybody. I live in an apartment. I can't, really can't zoom out the camera any further than that. It, it, trust me, it doesn't look good beyond this screen for like a super professional, presentable show. If you have the means, if you have a house where you can dedicate a room to this type of thing, go for it. It's the easiest way to do it in, in the long run. But if you're like me, you live in an apartment, you've got some of your players scattered across different time zones, we'll get to how we do it in a moment. Many shows opt to record via video chat software, usually Zoom or Discord, and then record the screen with something like OBS. The great thing here is that those services are free and easy to use, and you get a good view of everyone's faces, so you have kind of a good view of everyone's expression for all those little moments, unlike a super wide shot if you're filming around a table. This can work really well, but there are some very common pitfalls. First, this just unfortunately will not be reasonable for some people, especially if you live in a rural area with slow internet access. We've all been on a video call with someone with bad internet. It's not pretty, it gets pixelated, the sound isn't good, doesn't make for good entertainment. You might also want to have everyone get their own external webcam, which is another expense you could incur. You can see that my webcam here isn't very good, it's very grainy, especially in the dark areas around here. Plus I've just got all this background stuff, I would probably get a green screen and everything if I was going to do this for real or set up somewhere against the wall. A lot of computers built in microphones also aren't very good, especially laptop microphones. So even if you're recording this way, you're probably also still gonna wanna buy your own external microphone. I use this little guy, the Blue Snowball. Very cheap, best bang for your buck. Not sponsored, but I would if you're listening, Blue. And of course you can always upgrade to big time professional mics at a later date if you start making money. So let's explore another option. Only recording the audio, no faces. If you're playing in person, this is a piece of cake. Just pick up a half-decent, omnidirectional podcasting microphone, and you're good to go. One audio source makes file management a breeze, but does have the downside of being harder to edit because any crosstalk, side conversations, or dice rolling sounds can't really be removed easily. And now we come to the way that we happen to do things here on our show. We record fully remotely from each of our homes, sound only, and end up with one audio file for each person Six in total. There's a lot of ups and downs to this, it's inherently complicated, but personally I think it's worth it in the end. So every one of us has a microphone, and we record directly into Audacity, which is this very simple free program that we personally only use for recording, not the editing. You can edit in Audacity, it's a bit limited, but it's free. We leave most of the settings in here on default if my memory serves, except we set it to mono. You want to make sure that the name of your microphone in this section is your microphone. And of course, you should always be wearing headphones while you record. So when you're ready to record, you're in your Discord call with everyone or whatever, and you ask, is everyone ready to start? They say yes, and you all hit the red button up here to start. Then you're going to go to a website with an internet synchronized clock. We use time.is. There's other ones, I'm sure. Then the next time a minute rolls around, everybody claps right into their microphone at the same time. So right when the minute is coming around, you wait for it. Five, four... clap right into your microphone, right? If you've ever seen behind the scenes stuff for a movie, you know that little black and white clapper board? Same concept here. This gives the editor a definitive moment in time that is the same on all the audio tracks, so that syncing them up is easier later. Then you just leave Audacity running in the background while you play. At the end of the session, you hit the square to stop recording, 
and then you go up to File, you find Export, Export as WAV or MP3, pick a folder on your computer, give it a name, super simple. Then everybody sends those files to the editor, Google Drive, email, whatever works for you guys, and they can start editing. Another similar option is this website, it's called Zencaster. This can facilitate some of this for you instead of Audacity and make things a bit easier, but it does also rely on having a solid internet connection, so use that with caution. Also with Zencaster and most of its competitors, you are limited to a slightly lowered audio quality without paying, which is something else to consider. I think it's probably a worthwhile investment if no one in your group has any experience with editing, but if one of you is comfortable with editing, I'd recommend recording individually, just my two cents. Let me just give you a few quick tips for better audio quality before we move on to editing. Number one, always do a test before you start, right? You know, one, two, three, testing, testing, pause, listen back to it. Better safe than sorry. When speaking into a microphone, you always want to make sure that you're not being too loud or too quiet. If you look at this monitor here in Audacity, and this is a universal interface, you'll see this in every program for recording audio, my speech is peaking around negative 12 there. Uh, if I get excited, if I'm like, wow, that's crazy, because well, we're playing a game and something crazy happened. I get up to like that negative six, negative three range, right? You never want to have you never want to have this happen where you're consistently up at zero. You could see how bad this sounds. It's not good. I'm not going to get into the complexities of audio science too much, but just trust me, you want to be around twelve or six. Similarly, if you're too quiet, if I sit way far away back here, this doesn't sound as good either. It gets kind of mixed in with the background noise. If you're too loud, you can just back away a little bit or adjust the sensitivity of your microphone with this slider here. And if you're too quiet, you probably just have to sit a little bit closer. Some microphones are also going to have a physical dial for their sensitivity on them as well, so look for that if you find that you're way off. Number three, if you roll real dice, try to make that sound a little bit quieter. For example, this wood and plastic dice tower that I have, way too loud for the show. But this felt dice tray, does a good job of dampening the sound. Plastic or rubber dice are also gonna be a lot quieter than metal dice. On a similar note, remember to put your phone on vibrate or silent and don't have it on the same table surface as your microphone. If this vibrates, your microphone is gonna pick it up and it's gonna be zzz, zzz in the background, you don't want that. And just be aware of generally anything else around you that might make some background noise. My desk has this like sliding keyboard thing, so just be aware of that sort of thing. And then number four, be aware of any ongoing mechanical noise. You got a loud fridge, you got a loud air conditioning unit. Try to mitigate that sound as much as possible. Depending on your air conditioning system, you can run it and still get good sound, but you should do a test beforehand to find out if, if you can. You might also want to record your tabletop so viewers can keep track of combat. If you're in person, a small action camera like a GoPro mounted above the table will get the job done. Just make sure you do a clap sync where both cameras can see it. If you're playing virtually, you can use a screen capture software like OBS to record your browser with your VTT of choice. To sync that up, you'll move a token with the arrow keys so that it's really snappy, and you'll count 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And that should be very easy to line up and post. This step is optional. We didn't do it for Campaign 1 of Roll for Distraction, but we started using it in Season 2. Alright, so you've done your recording somehow, one way or another. How do we actually then go and turn that into a watchable or listenable thing? Before you get into editing, you should decide what level of editing you want to do. And by that I don't mean beginner, intermediate, advanced. I mean literally how much editing do you want to do? Personally, I don't like actual plays that have like three hour episodes. It's just too much for me. So I like to cut our show down to like 40 to 60 ish ish minutes. It's personal preference. You do what you feels right for your show. Our podcast doesn't record our faces, like I said, but for that, the editing style is basically gonna be the same as any other YouTube video, right? Cutting when you feel like you need to cut something out, not rocket science. You can kind of just let the camera be the majority of your visuals. You might want some lower thirds for people's names and things like that. But a lot of what I'm gonna talk about here is for our show, for our audio only show, is applicable to video shows as well. So I'm here in Adobe Premiere Pro, and this is what my user interface looks like. It'll be something similar to this in most programs, Final Cut, Vegas, Avid, whatever you like. You should arrange your audio tracks in a stack, something like this. Like I said, this is not a full software tutorial, I'm just gonna explain the general process, and then you can mimic this in whatever program you like. So these are the raw files from Season 3, Episode 3 of our podcast that I'm gonna use as an example for this demo. Right off the bat, something I like to do is color code the audio tracks, and then put the Game Master on top. 
And then I do this the same way for every episode. I'm the purple one, John's the gray one. You should trust me, this makes your job easier at a glance. When you do your first episode, pick some arbitrary colors and stick to them. Next, you want to find your clap syncs that you did and line those up. It should be a really obvious spike in the waveform, like so. Hey, everybody relax. Oh. And you want to cut them and line them all up. So we cut, delete everything before that, and then line them all up. I'll fast forward through this. And then when you're done, it should be something like this. Oh, yeah. that was right on. That was oh. crisp. That was That's what you want. And then listen ahead until you find an actual intro point, or you can leave in a little bit of a cold open for comedic effect if you like. So sneak preview of episode three, our silly little cold open is this. I gotta go squish my laundry, hold on. <laughs> what? Squish? <laughs> Switch. I, I also heard squish, I was I like, heard, uh, You guys heard, what? I gotta go squish my laundry, right? Like. <laughs> if you've recorded your tabletop while you're here, skip ahead, find your one, two, three count that you did, and sync that at this time as well. So the next step is to balance your audio levels and try to reduce the background noise. Remember that at least some of your audience, if you're doing an audio and video version of the show, will be only listening to the sound of your show. So to them, the sound is everything. So you, you should at least try to make it pretty good. I'm going to explain my process in Premiere and Adobe Audition. If you're using different software, you'll want to look up similar effects in your program. I'm by no means an audio engineer, but I am a professional video editor, and these methods have worked well enough for me. If you are an audio engineer, please sound off in the comments. Let me know how I can do better. <laughs> First, right inside of Premiere, I use an effect called DE Noise to, as the name implies, reduce the noise. So if we look at, uh, say, Colin's audio here, you can kind of see, if I expand this, that even when he isn't speaking, there's a bit of a noise floor here. So if we just listen to him and watch the audio monitor, there's some noise happening even when he's not talking, and that's normal, that's probably just his air conditioner. So we could take denoise, slap it on here, and listen to it again. It's a lot less now. And if I want to, I can even turn up the percentage to make it a little stronger. You don't want to overdo this, it can get a little weird. But you can see that now most of his noise is gone. Now this is just for consistent noise, like air conditioning or something like that. It's not going to help with like a uh, spiky noise, as I like to call it, like, with like a dog barking in the background, something inconsistent. It's not going to help with that. The best way to not have background noise is to not have background noise. So whatever you can do to silence your recording environment, do that. Also, if any of your players are in a room with poor acoustics, there's a similar effect called D-Reverb that also does what it sounds like. You can throw that on to D-Reverb. So then the next thing I do is I like to run an audio levels pass for each uh, track. I know some people will do this at the end for the whole thing. I like to do it at the beginning. There isn't necessarily a right answer. You can do it at the beginning and the end if you want, but I'll just show you how I do it. So you, you right click on your audio track, you hit edit clip in Audition. So from Audition, I like to do a couple of things. I like to use this effect called the D clicker. Again, does what it sounds like, removes any sort of weird clicks and pops in the background. You hit scan. You then hit repair, and sometimes you have to do it twice. And then once that's good, we use match loudness. Again, names doing what they sound like they do. This is gonna make it so that his average speaking volume is the same across every moment. So if he said something kind of quiet and mumbly, it's gonna bring it up. If he shouted, it's gonna bring it down. It's gonna make for a smoother listening experience for your listeners. These are the numbers I use down here if you wanna cross-reference this. Again, if you're a real audio engineer, you wanna adjust something, please let us know in the comments. And then just save. Close it out, go back to Premiere, and you should see now that his levels are nice and even across most of the podcast. And you're gonna just repeat that process for all six of them. And then from there, your setup is done. You're properly in the edit. You should listen to the whole podcast as you go, cut little things. If there's a bathroom break, you can kind of see right here in the audio, there's a big lull in John's audio. So when the GM is away, that probably means nothing important was happening. You can kind of cut that bit out. It's up to you if you want to get rid of every little pause, every little thing. I'm admittedly a bit of a perfectionist and I spend way too much time on this, but you do what feels right for you. You also want to get rid of moments where people aren't talking, but they are making some other kind of noise. So for example, listen to this piece. Those are recordings that are coming in, but now... Sounds like Colin ate a chip or something in the background. That's totally fine. You're just going to want to get rid of that. Those are recordings that are coming in, but now... 
just as powerful. That's much nicer, right? And then in our case, when we're fully done with it, this is what it looks like, much like a cooking show. I've baked it already. You can see I did a lot of cutting. Looks like Thanos came here and dusted our audio sequence. I just got rid of everything where somebody wasn't saying something. You can also see that it's much shorter. This is 47 minutes. It used to be an hour 23, right? Again, do what works right for your show. If you want it to be long and relaxed, make it long and relaxed. If you want it to be a tight package, and you have the time to do that editing, make it a tight package. From here, you might be almost done. That's an audio recording of a game, which is technically all you need. But let's look at some things you can add to make it even better. You'll probably want some kind of intro and outro. An intro will usually just be a recap from the previous episode and a title card. Here's a bit of ours from back in Season 2 as an example. Last time on Roll for Distraction, The Family Jewels. The party regrouped with Rogue, and she sold them some intel on Militech. Wounded and unresponsive. In the first episode, you obviously won't have that, so you'll want to introduce yourselves, explain what the campaign is about, and introduce the player characters, and so forth. Your outro will usually just be saying goodbye and the credits, but remember that for your audio-only podcast, you'll need to record the credits as voiceovers. Here's one of ours as an example. We'll see you in two weeks. Peace. And the audio-only version should be something like this. Roll for Distraction is produced, edited, and game mastered by Alexander Vigna. The show features Alexandria Holbrook, Gerard Lambrugo, Colin Keating, Brian Graff, and John Price as the players. This episode features Trap Powerful Intro 21 by Taiga Sound Production, 80s Bad Guy by Fat Sounds, Lightless Dawn by Kevin MacLeod, and Adrenaline by Tim Kulig, used under the filmmusic.io standard CC license. This episode also features Mega City Slums from TabletopAudio.com. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you again in the next episode. Speaking of music, that's another huge way to improve your podcast. Especially for RPGs, it really makes tense moments like combat or a dramatic reveal feel much more impressive. And it's often just kind of awkwardly quiet without it. I like to get most of our music from filmmusic.io and tabletopaudio.com. And then YouTube has their own library of free songs as well, and there's plenty of other places to look. Just make sure you're doing your research into their licenses and give credit even if it's not legally required just to be safe. On the topic of sound, you're going to want sound effects. For example... Just search around for free sound packs on the internet, there's loads of them, and freesound.org is great as well. And if you're not recording your faces like we do, you're probably going to want some visual effects as well. I do most of this stuff in Premiere, but I do our waveforms and some other advanced things in After Effects. You can find a lot of explosions and lightning bolts and the like on the internet for free or cheap. This is not a visual effects tutorial, but I can do that if people beg for it in the comments, but it's too much to go over here. You can also get a lot of visuals out of stock photos and videos. I use Unsplash and Pexels for the vast majority of things, and I edit them in Photoshop if they need something extra. Pexels does have a better selection of videos that will probably be useful for magic or sci-fi stuff. I like both of these sites because their license is completely free, and they don't even require credit. Of course, all of these visuals are entirely optional. You can very much just have a still of your logo, or art of your player characters, or a waveform on the screen, run the audio in the background, and call it a day. How much work you want to put in is entirely up to you, and it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one ratio of effort to success, so do whatever you have time to do. And that's most of it. Once you've done all your cutting, your effects, your music, etc., export it, take a day of the week, make a thumbnail, upload it. Obviously, I skimmed over a lot of details here, so please, please, please leave any questions in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them quickly. If there's an appetite for more in-depth videos on a particular topic, Again, leave that in the comments, and if a lot of you ask for it, I'll make it. If you're a podcaster yourself and you want to add something to something I said, or offer an alternative method, please let us know. I'd love to share some knowledge with each other. And of course, I'd appreciate it very much if you did the usual YouTuber stuff, like, comment, subscribe. You guys know the drill. While you're here, check out our podcast. We do Let's Plays as well. If you want to watch those, we're playing Tears of the Kingdom and Elden Ring at the moment, if you're watching this right after it was uploaded. And we do occasional live streams. So thanks again for watching, and best of luck with your podcast. <laughs>